Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Muriel Benakissa and I'm a food photographer, recipe developer and content creator. And on this channel, I love to talk about food photography. More specifically, in today's video, I'm actually going to be editing your photos. So the six images that I've selected are images that have been submitted to me by people in my community. And I'll be sharing with you the step-by-step -step process of how I go about editing photos that I haven't personally shot. So if you're interested in this topic, make sure to watch this video from beginning to the end. My computer is now set up. I've opened up the images in Lightroom, so let's start editing. This very first image is an image that was submitted by Curry Lens. I love this process shot. Honestly, I love process shots in general. I don't really shoot them as often as I should or as I want to, but I really find them beautiful. And this one in particular, I just love the beautiful diffused light. I love the presence of hands, the beautiful bright yellow, and the fact that the whole scene looks very natural. I love let's get started with the editing the first thing that i'm going to do here is do what i usually do in my editing videos if you haven't watched any of my editing videos in the past one thing that i always do when i open an image is decrease the highlights increase the shadows increase the whites and decrease the blacks in this case i'm not going to decrease the blacks too too much because I kind of want to create more of a bright image as opposed to a darker image. I'm going to increase the white just a little bit more and increase the shadows a little bit more. I'm not going to play with the clarity, texture, dehaze, vibrance and saturations just yet, but I might come back to it a little bit later. In terms of the tone curve, I'm thinking of maybe adding a little bit of a faded look to the image to make it look a little bit more vintage. Just because it's a process shot and I think it could look really nice to have a little bit of a vintage feel to the image. Next, I'm going to drag down the shadows just a touch and increase the highlights just a little. And I think I added a little bit too much fade, so I'm just going to drag it down a little bit. Perfect for now. Next, a hue, saturation and luminance. I feel like I want to decrease the orange saturation just a little bit. I want to increase the yellow saturation because I would like that yellow to pop a little bit more. Just a smidge. I mean, I know for me a smidge is like 30 and for most people a smidge is like plus one, but a smidge for me is plus 31 <laughs> in this case. I'm going to decrease the magenta saturation as well as the purple saturation. And I'm just going to increase the red to 22. So, so far, if I click on that little switch, here are the differences in colors. There's not a big difference. It's mostly really the, the orange I find that is really apparent in the arms. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the luminance of the orange just so that the oranges look a little bit brighter. Uh, with the yellow, I think I'm gonna do the same thing. But then with the red, I'm going to bring it down. Uh, no, actually, I'm going to increase the red a little bit. As you can tell, like my editing style is very much, I kind of try out things and see if it works or if it doesn't work. Now let's play with the hue a little bit. Yeah, I think I would like the reds to look a little bit more purple. So I'm just dragging the slider to the left. The yellow, I'll make it just a touch more orangey. Let's see if there's some blue in this image. Yeah, the dress actually. Let's see if there's some blue. It's clearly there on the dress. I feel like I might add actually a little bit of saturation to the dress and increase the luminance here. And before I do anything else, I'm going to use the um, radial filter to kind of bring the focus to the center right here. I, I press O to see what part of the image is affected by this radial filter. And then I'm going to drop the shadows because I want everything that is outside of, you know, the mixing of the dough that it to be just a touch darker. Now I want to adjust the crop before I do anything else because the cake pan is a little bit tilted. So let's just rotate it a little bit. I don't want to be cutting too much off of the hand because it, it would look a bit funny if most of it is cut off. It's okay if it's just a little bit tilted because I feel like if I crop it a little bit too much, we'll just see like a little small part of the hand and I find it's not as visually appealing. I'm gonna use the adjustment brush to increase the shadows in the dress. I just want this to come out a little bit more, just a touch. And I will decrease a little bit of the texture because there's quite a few um, little folds there. So I don't want that to be too apparent. Perfect. 
effect. And then I'm gonna go back to this radial filter and I think I might make it a little bit darker. It's funny how like I started off with seeing this image thinking I'm going to be going like more of a brighter and airier look, but as I'm moving through the editing, I'm just realizing no, I think I'm going to go a little bit more moody. <laughs> Next, we are going to increase the texture just a little bit in the shot as a whole. I don't think I want to increase the clarity, but I'm noticing that because I had the radial filter around that cake pan, the arm now is a little bit too dark. So I just want to brighten that up a little bit. The shadows are at 77 and I might increase the, the exposure a little bit here. Okay, perfect. I think I want to just add a little bit more contrast in the shot. And then I'm going to brighten up this part of the image. So the shadows are again at, uh, are at 77. I think I want that part of the image to be just, just a little bit brighter to kind of emphasize that the light is coming from the window and the lower left part of the image is kind of like a darker spot in the image. And I think that looks really nice. I'm going to add some texture specifically on the dough here, just a little bit. And then I'm going to bring down the shadows here of the pan, just so that the dough is the brightest element here. I'm gonna press O and I'm realizing that I painted on top of the dough itself. So there's a space. If you scroll down uh, below all the settings and you can click on erase and then you're, you're able to erase some of the adjustment brush that you've uh, painted on. Nice, I like this. I'm gonna add a little bit of vignette effect, I think. Let's see what it does. Yeah, I put the vignette to minus 19, just to add a little bit kind of um, a cocoon effect, I guess, to the image. So after looking at the shot for a little bit longer, I think that I wanna change it a little bit more. So I find that I made it a little bit too bright and I'd rather go for more of a darker and moody look. The first thing I'm going to do to do that is actually bring the blacks located in the tone curve just back to zero instead of where they were. So that kind of removes that faded look that I created at the beginning. Then I'm going to click on the shadow point on the tone curve and bring that down a touch. I'm not going to touch the, touch the highlights, but I'm going to go back to the basic panel and drop the exposure of this image to minus 15. Then I'm going to click on the radial filter, select the pan and make that even darker. So drop the shadows, drop the blacks a little bit, and I might even decrease a little bit of the clarity to minus nine. I think that looks really nice. It's not as light, but I find that it really kind of brings out the colors that are present in this image. So I'm just going to do a side-by-side -side comparison with what we started with and the final image that we got in the end. So on the right side is Curie Lens's initial image and on the left side is the edited image. What you can see is that I really brought out some of the colors of the shot. I really brought out that the yellow particularly and also the purple. And you can tell that I played a lot with bringing out the textures as well. I find that the texture in the napkin really comes out more and so does the texture in the dough itself. Another thing that we did here that I think really adds to the image is kind of creating a gradient of light. So you can see that in this shot, there is more light in the top right corner than there is in the bottom left corner. And this, along with the positioning of the, of the hands kneading the dough kind of leads the viewer's attention to the dough, which is the centerpiece of this image. In the end, I'm really, really happy with the final editing. This is just a beautiful shot. So that's it. Let's move on to the next photo. So this is an image that was submitted by Sude Cordina and her Instagram handle is Sude Food Photos. I love the fact that it, they kept it really, really simple in terms of the styling. I also like the different backdrops. Like instead of just going for a black backdrop, there is a blue backdrop and a black backdrop at the bottom and like the little crumbs. So let's start editing. So we are going to decrease the highlights a little bit, increase the shadows. I think I'm going to increase them quite a little bit. Increase the whites and drop the blacks. And in this case, I am going to play with the texture right off the bat. I'm going to increase it to plus 20. Do I want to increase the clarity just a touch to plus eight? I'm going to put four dots on 
the curve, bring the shadows down a little bit, just a touch, and bring the highlights up just a little bit. I am going to play with the hue, saturation, and luminance. I think the orange is just a little bit too saturated, so I'm going to decrease that. And guys, by no means is this the perfect way to edit. There's a million ways to edit one single photo. I'm just doing what kind of comes naturally to me and what feels right based on the specific image. But even though it feels right to me, it might not necessarily be like the right thing, the perfect thing to do. But this is kind of what I would be doing. Here I am noticing that in the yellow, there is a little bit of a greenish undertone. So I'm going to click on the hue panel and I'm going to drag the slider towards the left. So towards the orange a little bit so that there's no green undertone. I'll show you if let's say I would drag it to the other side, you see how the red looks radioactive, but if you put it to the other side, it just looks pink. So I'm just going to increase it just a little bit to decrease it, I should say, to plus 12. I think that's about right. Now let's see if I increase the blues, the, the luminance of the blues. Yeah, it kind of brightens it up. I want to increase the color just by a little bit. I'm just going to crop this image now. I'm cropping away a little bit of the part of the loaf that was left uncut. I find this kind of looks better. It seems more focused. I'm going to align my lines of my crop frame with the cutting board on which the bread is, just so that it's kind of like a straight line right here. So it's more visually appealing. It's not quite right yet so about like this now i'm going to use a radial filter because you know i love them i'm going to make the loaf just a touch oh, i'm gonna press o so that i see what part of the image is affected and i'm actually going to invert the radial fi filter so that the loaf itself is affected so now i just drop the exposure just a touch i want to increase the highlights a little bit drop the blacks but just by a smidge a smidge and then increase the texture because i think the texture of the bread is really really nice and i'm just actually going to go back and decrease the saturation of the bread a little bit decrease the yellow and now let's see if i make the image just a little bit bluer no never mind I do want the blues to come out a little bit more though. So I'll increase that. So I want to add a little bit of a difference of light in the image by using a graduated filter that I'm going to drag from the left to the right. And this I am going to drop the shadows and drop the exposure. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to add a little bit of shadows to the bread so that we get a point of focus as opposed to, you know, the whole loaf. I think in my opinion, where I see the point of focus right now is right in the center here. So that's why I'm kind of adding this graduated filter there. And this was the before and this is the after and I'm going to just put them side by side just so that you see the difference. In the initial image, the bread was a lot brighter as opposed to everything that was around. Also, the texture of the bread was present but not highlighted as much. Obviously, it's perfectly normal. This was an unedited photo, right? So what I did is really highlight the texture of the bread, made the bread a little bit less saturated so that it looked a little bit more natural. I also created that gradient of light in the photo to bring back uh, the attention to the tip part of the bread. And yeah, I think it looks really good. Let's move on to the next photo. This photo was submitted by Davinia Oshea and her Instagram handle is Davinia O Photography. It's a great shot, beautiful citrus. And that backdrop, by the way, is amazing. I don't know if you made it yourself, Davinia, but it looks great. <laughs> So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to crop the image just like this initially. Then I'm going to just rotate it. So because I, I see this more. Oh, actually, I like it horizontal. Never mind. I'm going to keep it like that or horizontal and see if I want to move this. So no, I really want this citrus juicer at the top to be in the image because I think it adds a lot of texture. So I want to keep that in frame. So I'm going to keep my crop like this as it is. What do I do first? Drop the highlights, increase the shadows, increase the whites, and drop the blacks. All right, so this looks really nice. What I'm seeing right now that I might have a little bit of difficulty with um, is the fact that there's three different like degrees of light. So 
from on the right side, the light is much darker. In the middle is kind of like just soft diffuse. And then on the left side is harsh light. So I'm going to be using a lot of graduated filters to kind of uh, balance the photo out a little bit, but it's, that's not a big deal. It's something that is very easily changed. In terms of texture, I'm going to increase it just a touch to like plus 10, but not too, too much. And let's play with the tone curve. I'm going to put my points down, drop the shadows. Oh, this looks so good. Dropping the shadows just really, I find makes the photo pop a little bit more and then increase the highlights here just a bit. This orange in particular looks amazing. Now let's move to the hue saturation and luminance curve. I'm going to go to hue first because I'm already noticing one thing. I find that when you shoot lemons and limes, it's one of those ingredients that I have a hard time getting the coloring right from my camera. They always kind of tend turning a little bit more green. And in the case of limes, they tend to look a little bit more yellow for some reason. So those are always ingredients that I edit quite a bit in a Lightroom in post. With the lemon half that's right here, I'm just going to move the yellow slider to the left, so towards the orange. Yeah, and that already looks better. This is the before and this is the after. See how it already looks so much more natural? So that's always a thing that I do when I play with citrus, especially lemons. And I think it actually even affected here the, um, the rind of the orange. See how it changes? And also just the photo as a whole had kind of a little bit of a greenish hue to it. With playing with that, I find it kind of balanced things out a little bit. Now in terms of saturation of the red, maybe just a little bit. And I'm going to drag the hue to the left because I want the red to be a little bit more vibrant and closer to like almost a purple-ish as opposed to closer to orange. I find that the greens look really nice. I'm not going to play with them in terms of the hue, but I might decrease their saturation just a smidge, not just a smidge actually, to minus 49, which is quite a bit, but I think it looks nice. Because the greens are kind of dulled out, it brings a little bit more attention to the citrus, which is the star. I'm going to drop the luminance of the greens as well, just a touch, and then increase the luminance of the orange and the luminance of the red. All right, so this looks already really nice. So I'm going to jump to the graduated filter because my soul is telling me that I should. <laughs> so first things first, I'm going to drag a graduated filter here from the left and I'm going to drop the shadows, drop the highlights. Oh yeah, look, oh my goodness, look at this. Look how much that brought out the texture of the bag. It's really crazy, the power of Lightroom. Honestly, this gets me so excited. But yeah, I think that looks really nice. I might even drop the whites just a touch. Ooh, but see, I'm noticing here that my graduated filter is affecting this orange and I don't want it to because that was one of the most beautiful oranges of the shot. I'm going to click on brush here and I'm gonna slide down, click on erase and go ahead and erase the effects on this orange and maybe even on a little bit of the leaves here. A little bit of the orange, like that. Perfect, good. Now I'm going to take another graduated filter and drag it from the right to the left, like so. And I'm going to increase the shadows and increase the exposure just by a smidge. Increase the white, that's good. And now I'm gonna go in with my brush and bring out the brightness in this orange specifically and the lemon actually. So I'm gonna increase the exposure to plus 60, which might be a bit too much. Oh no, see? It's, it's popping out, it's popping out, it's coming alive. <laughs> Perfect, and because these have such beautiful textures, I'm going to increase the texture to plus 39. I love the texture tool, by the way. When Lightroom added it, it to their tools, I was just ecstatic because it's so useful. I'm going to add a brush up here, this little orange as well. And I mean, I think we're pretty much there. Just increase the exposure just to plus 15 and then go back with my graduated filter, click on the one that affected the bag. I'm going to drop the exposure here just a touch. Actually, not just a touch, <laughs> to minus 0.45. Wow, it looks good. I wanna just rotate it to see if I like another angle better. No, I think this is my favorite angle. And so this is the before and after. I mean, really beautiful. I, I think it's a, 
an amazing shot. Congrats, Lavinia. This is a really beautiful shot. And I think we got the editing right in the end. Let's move to the next shot. This image was submitted by Naira and her Instagram handle is Belly Lama. I really love the simplicity of this image, particularly the fact that not a lot of props were used to make this image, mostly just ingredients and all the ingredients that are in the guacamole itself. And also, if you've been following me on Instagram, you know how much I love to use props and food props more specifically to frame an image. And I think in this case, the jalapeno placed in the back, uh, as well as the avocado, the lemon, uh, the mango, and the red onion placed in the foreground really kind of create a frame around the bowl of guacamole, which is really, really nice. Let's get started with the editing of this shot. I'm going to bring down the exposure just, just a little bit. Bring down the highlights, increase, and the shadows, increase the whites, drop the blacks. Find the photo has a little bit of a green tint. I mean, obviously because there's lots of greens in the shot, it might feel like that, but I am going to move the tint towards the magenta just a touch, just to plus 10, like so. Now let's play with the tone curve, place our three dots, one that is already there at the blacks, one at the shadows, one at the midtones, and one at the highlights. Drop the shadows just a little bit and increase the highlights just a little bit increase the midtones just a little bit see how it added a lot of contrast already to the image and then i'm going to already go with the graduated filter and brighten up i want to brighten up the salsa here i'm going to invert the the radial filter so that the guacamole is the part of the image that i'm editing and I want to increase the shadows of that a little bit, even increase the exposure. And I think it already looks really nice. Next, we are going to play with the hues here. You know, it's so funny because the previous photo, I said that I always touch up the lemons because the color doesn't come out as natural as I would like them to. But in this case, I think Nara, your, your camera must calibrate the yellows really nicely because I don't think I even need to touch the yellows in the shot because they're pretty true to life. I think I'm going to decrease the saturation of the greens just, just a little bit, just so that it looks a little bit more natural. Increase the luminance of the magenta so that the, the red onion kind of pops a little bit. I mean, honestly, there's not, there's not a lot to do to this, this photo. I think it already looks really nice. I'm just adding up a little bit of texture. No, you know, I think the last thing I want to do is to add a little bit of a vignetting effect. So I'm going to go on effects here and I'm going to create a vignette around my subject. And I will also crop this image just a little bit because as you can see here, you know, the focus of the image is obviously the guacamole, but it's a little bit higher on the image. So there's a lot of kind of free space at the bottom. And although there's no right or wrong, I personally would, if I, I shot this image, I would just crop it a little bit so that it's right, like it's right in the center, like so. Yeah, perfect. I think it looks really nice. And this is the before and after. I didn't do a whole lot of editing to it. I just kind of made the photo a little bit, I guess, richer in the sense that I increased the shadows a little bit, made them a little bit darker, increased a little bit of the highlights, removed a little bit of the green saturation and, and yeah, I think it looks really, really nice. So let's move to the next image. This photo was submitted by Priyanka from Date Die Plate. What I really love about this image is not only that it looks really delicious and appetizing, it has a lot of different colors, but also the props that were chosen were chosen very purposefully. The fact that Priyanka chose to dig two spoons inside of this bean casserole, I think, adds kind of a, a more natural element. Also the fact that the cast iron skillet is placed on an angle just adds nice movement to the shot. So let's start off by dropping the highlights a little bit, increasing the shadows. In this case, I don't think I'm going to play with the whites because the whites are very, very present in the shot already. And as you can tell here on the histogram, you, there's a lot of whites. I think we're going to play with that a little bit later with either the adjustment brush or with a radial filter. But we are going to drop the blacks a little bit and increase the texture here. Oh, this is making me hungry, honestly. <laughs> all these beautiful photos, all this amazing food. <laughs> so we're going to jump into the tone curve panel, put our three dots and then bring down the shadows and increase the highlights just by a touch. And you can already see like 
this was the initial image and this is after just a couple of edits you know the dish is already coming to life and we haven't even touched the hue saturation and luminance panel but now is the time so what we're going to do here is uh, bring out the red of the pomegranate a little bit more at this point i feel like it still has quite a little bit of orange in them but i'm going to drag the red slider towards the left to kind of make the red more poppy and more intense the green already looks good but i might just add just a smidge of blue to it so that it looks a little bit fresher and honestly apart from that i don't see anything else in terms of the hue saturation and luminance that i would want to do should i increase oh yeah i might increase the greens just a little bit here the, the luminance of the greens now let's move to taking care of the whites here let's create a radial filter like this and then we click O to see what is affected. The outside of the dish might actually make this a little bit bigger. Let's drop the exposure just a little bit and drop the highlights just a touch to kind of bring out a little bit of information. Although I'm not sure if this is the background of the image that was kind of, that had like little gray patches. So that part, I think I, I am going to increase the exposure just so that it blends a little bit more with the rest of the image here it's a little bit more natural and yeah honestly i think that's pretty much it i'm going to add one last thing and that is going to be a radial filter but this time on the beans right here so i'm going to invert it press o you see that the beans are what is going to be edited so uh, let's increase the shadows just by a smidge this time is an actual smidge <laughs> and increase the texture to 10 drop the shadows just a little bit i'm going to go back to the hue saturation and luminance panel and bring the green a little bit closer to the blues on in the hue panel just a touch like that perfect i think it looks really nice so let's look at the before and after this was the initial shot and on the right is the after shot I think it looks really, really cool. We didn't really do a lot of things to it, but just kind of brought out the colors of the green beans, brought out the colors of the pomegranate, made it look more texturized and added a little bit of shadows. And we also kind of played with the white of the background so that it wasn't as much of a pure white as it initially was. But yes, it looks really, really nice. I'm super happy with it and it looks delicious. Last but not least, this is a shot that was submitted by Steffi Constantin from RevEarth.Food. I mean, wow, this dessert looks divine. It looks absolutely amazing. I'm pretty sure Steffi owns an all vegan bakery and yeah, I'm excited to edit this. Although yet another shot that is making me super hungry and craving delicious food. So. We're going to do what we did for all the previous images. So we're going to decrease the highlights, increase the shadows, increase the whites and drop the blacks. In this case, I'm already going to increase the exposure just by a touch to 0.15 and I'm going to increase the texture to 16 as well. Now with the tone curve, I'm placing down my three dots and I'm going to drag down the shadows and increase the highlights. So I feel like this image needs a little bit of warmth, so I am going to move the temperature slider just a touch to the right, so towards the warmer side. Just a little bit. Good. Now let's jump to the hue saturation and luminance panel. And here we are going to start with the hue. Uh, I kind of like the blue. I'm not sure which blue I prefer, but I feel like I'm going to go a little bit closer to an aqua like this. I'm going to bring the greens of the photo that are here in the little flowers towards the blues just a bit. And the yellows, I'm going to make them a little bit more yellow as opposed to their like greenish hue that you can see again in the flowers here. And then for saturation, I'm going to drop the saturation of the green just a little bit because I really want the focus to be on this dessert. I'm going to drop the saturation of the blue just a little bit and drop the luminance of it as well and i feel like there is a little bit of a purple of a purple hue to this image so what i'm going to do is to drop the purple and the magentas towards the left so that this part of the image doesn't have like that purplish hint i want to go back to the basics panel and 
remove a little bit more of that purplish hue to the image by playing with the tint here just a little bit now i'm just going to go back to the settings and see if there's anything else that needs a little bit of extra tweaking i feel like i want to increase the the exposure a little bit more and decrease the highlights a little bit more because i find this spot on the image there's a lot of the there's these little little bubbles that i want their texture to kind of pop out because they're so beautiful i'm going to drop the highlights even more and drop the whites a little bit more and increase the shadows no i'm actually going to decrease the shadows and decrease the black now let's go with the specific adjustments the first thing i'm going to do is brighten up the shadows of this part of this dessert so here i'm going to just paint over this and i might even add a little bit of exposure here just a touch and one thing I'm going to do is because I see kind of like the reflection of the plate, which is all right, but there's an easy way that you can kind of go against that is by increasing the temperature to like a really small amount. Like let's say in this case, we're going, we're going to start with plus seven and then we're just going to brush over the blue part here, right here. So that kind of like removes the blue color, but you have to be careful. I can tell here that I went over the blue here because it looks a little bit more yellow. So I'm just going to go back and erase where I kind of went a bit too far. And I'm also going to decrease the saturation there just by a touch. And I am going to paint a little bit further here, like so. And I'm going to do the same thing here on this little dessert because it has a similar reflection from the plate and i'm just going to erase just a little bit like that perfect and now i'm going to take a radio filter click o to see what is affected and i don't want to make it warmer what i want to do is bring it to make it a little bit darker so that the main dessert is really the brightest spot in the image like so. So I think that's about it. I mentioned that I really like those little bubbles that are present here on the glaze. So I want to bring those out even more and I'm going to increase the texture to 42 ish and I'm going to paint on the bubbles right here. Kind of brings out these beautiful bubbles and I'm going to increase the shadows a little bit more, increase the exposure just a touch. So I'm looking at the before and after and I feel like my edits were a little bit uh, darker than what um, Steffi was going for. So what I'm going to do is just increase a little bit of the exposure of the image and increase the shadows so that the image is a little bit less bright. And I'm going to bring back a little bit of the cooler tones of the image. And because I'm bringing back a little bit of the, the coolness of the, the image that was there at the beginning, I am going to add a little bit of extra saturation to the cookie at the bottom so that it, it kind of complements the blue in the photo. So in terms of the saturation, I'm going to increase it, increase the orange saturation to 86 and the yellow to 29. And I'm going to also brighten the luminance of the orange and the luminance of the yellow. All right, I think we're basically there. So these are the side-by-side -side images. I think it looks really nice. We kind of just made the image a little bit brighter, just enhanced the colors. And I'm really happy with the final image. I think it was already beautiful to start off with. I think the dessert in, in and of its own is just like a piece of art. So all I did is really just kind of bring out the colors a little bit more and make the image a little bit more contrasty. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So I'm just going to show you all the images one after the other edited. This was the image by Curry Lens. This was the image by Sude. This was the shot by Davinia. This was the image by Naira. This was the image by Priyanka. And finally, this was the image by Steffi. Well, that's a wrap, you guys. Thank you so much if you've made it to the very end of this video. I know this was a long one. Thank you to all the people who submitted their photos. They were all really beautiful and it was so hard to pick the photos at random because I wanted to edit them all, but the video would have been two hours long if I did. But do let me know if you'd like me to repeat this format in the future. Let me know in the comments below and also be sure to like this video, subscribe if you like the content that I create, share the video if you want to. And on that note, I wish you a beautiful rest of the day and I'll talk to you very soon.